Welcome to this segment of Cocktail Quickies. My name is Samantha Montgomery, and I am the National Brand Ambassador for Bardstown Bourbon Company. Today, I'm gonna to show you three really easy ways to make an unbelievable classic called the Boulevardier. So, some of you might be familiar with the cocktail called a Negroni. A Boulevardier is a riff off of that cocktail, which is equal parts gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. So since we're in Kentucky and we're making bourbon, we're gonna sub in bourbon instead of the gin and call it the Boulevardier. It is a delicious cocktail and one of my favorites to make at home because none of the ingredients require anything you know, for you to do ahead of time. There's no infused syrups or um, juices to squeeze or anything like that. So as long as you have the three bottles on hand, um, some ice and then an orange doesn't hurt for the garnish, you're gonna have a great cocktail that you can make anytime. So the three cocktails, or the three variations that I'm going to show you is a traditional Boulevardier, a top shelf Boulevardier, and then a batched Boulevardier that you can keep in your fridge and, and spice up a little bit with some ingredients you can find around the house. So we're gonna start with our traditional Boulevardier. To make this, you're going to want a mixing glass or something to stir the cocktail in. Uh, if you don't have something that looks like this at home, you can use a pint glass for beer, a coffee mug, really doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you got will work. Uh, a spoon to stir your cocktail with. This is a very nice bar spoon, but anything with a long handle will work. And then something to strain the cocktail uh, from the mixing glass into your glass with. This is called a julep strainer. Um, I've used a spatula, a slotted spatula at home before, so you can get creative, find a way to hold that ice back. Uh, most things will work, including your hand if you're serving one for yourself. So pretty simple tools, very simple ingredients. For our sweet vermouth, I'm going to be using Dolan sweet vermouth, which is a French style. There are tons of sweet vermouths out there, very easy to find in most liquor stores. Go ahead and play around and pick up a couple. Um, just remember to keep your vermouth in the fridge as it's the only one that will uh, go bad should you leave it at room temperature after it's open. Campari is a pretty iconic spirit used in this cocktail. Um, since we're you know, sticking to basics today, I didn't wanna to stray too far away from this, but there are definitely some substitutes out there that you can use. Um, the important part is that it is a bitter spirit with a bright orange flavor, right? So if you've never tried Campari, um, using it in this cocktail is a great way to introduce yourself to bitter spirits. And then for our bourbon, we are going to be Bardstown, uh, we are going to be using Bardstown Bourbon Company's product. For the traditional Boulevardier, I have our Fusion Series, which is a blend of three Kentucky straight bourbons, two produced and aged by us, and one older that we source. So it is the fusion of young, and old bourbon, which gives it a very complex flavor profile and speaks very well in cocktails. So let's dive right in and, and start making this cocktail. So I'm gonna start with my sweet vermouth and I'm going to measure three quarters of an ounce. If you don't have something like this at home, this is a cocktail jigger, you can just plug these ounces into Google and have them tra translate it to tablespoons, just a real easy hack three quarters of sweet vermouth go into your mixing glass. Then I'm going to grab the Campari and measure the same amount, three quarters of an ounce. Then I'm going to reach for my bourbon and I'm going to double the amount. I'm gonna use one and a half ounces Traditionally, with a Negroni, at least, uh, when you're using gin, it is um, all equal parts, but I think bourbon, kind of having a sweeter nature and less herbaceous as gin, obviously, um, you can double it up and it makes it just a little bit more bourbon forward. Then I'm gonna add ice to my mixing glass and stir it. I'm 
Your ice definitely matters. Um, so uh, the larger your ice, the longer it's gonna take to stir and dilute it. Obviously, you probably are going to be working with one type of ice, whatever you got in your fridge or your freezer. Um, but just be careful. When you have much smaller ice or crushed ice, it's gonna dilute a lot quicker. And the point of stirring it is to give it the perfect amount of dilution, right? So a quick tip about stirring. Think less about how long or how many times you're stirring it and think more about how much water you're adding. So right here, your wash line is towards the bottom, right? As I stir it, the wash line is gonna go up and the ice is gonna fall down, letting me know that I've added a sufficient amount of water. Stir, stir, stir. It's not gonna take me that long because my ice has been out and uncovered, so it's gonna dilute pretty quickly. Also, I'm gonna be serving it on the rock, so I know it's gonna dilute even further. So a quick few stirs. You can see how the ice fell down. The wash line went up a little bit. I'm good with it right there. I'm going to strain that into my glass. And we are going to be serving it on the rocks too. So it's gonna dilute even further as it sits. So you strain it into your glass. Add a big ice cube. Add a big ice cube. I'm using some uh, clear ice from Kentucky Straight Ice, which you might see around bars in Louisville, uh, but it almost makes it invisible in your cocktail. It's there. We're going to add an orange peel. And the orange peel is very important, not so much as a garnish, but to express the oils on the outside of the orange peel. So this side coated with oils. The opposite side, nothing good. So you wanna make sure that the oily side is face down over your cocktail and you gently squeeze the long sides of the peel to express the oil over the surface. Maybe kiss the rim a little bit and then twist the ends in towards each other to give it a nice curl and drop it in your drink. And that is your traditional Boulevardier with fusion bourbon. The first Napa Valley style destination on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail to combine distilling, culinary, and beverage experiences. The Bardstown Bourbon Company places the science and art of whiskey making front and center. Our blend of bourbon makers push the boundaries of innovation to produce the highest quality Kentucky bourbon, whiskey, and rye, while honoring the traditional craft of distilling for a modern, authentic bourbon experience. To learn more about our full line of products or schedule a tour, visit bardstownbourbon.com. So the next version of this cocktail that I'm going to show you would be a top shelf version because sometimes you just want to use something really nice in your cocktail. So for this one, I'm still going to be using the Dolan Sweet Vermouth, the Campari, but I'm going to upgrade my bourbon um, to something a bit uh, more aged and higher strength. So this is Bardstown Bourbon Company's Discovery Series number two, which is a cast strength bourbon. It's 122.2 proof. But don't be scared, we're only gonna use an ounce of it. And with the other two of these spirits being so much lower in ABV, uh, you're not gonna set yourself up to uh, get drunk too soon, let's say. <laughs> so, very similar build. Um, we are going to start in our mixing glass with our modifiers. So I'm gonna grab the vermouth first, and we're going to do one whole ounce of vermouth. into the mixing glass. Then grab our Campari. Kind of fun to play around with your bitter spirits. Um, there are tons in the category if you've not been into it yet. Um, you know, subbing in an Amaro or a different type of Italian bitter can really give you some extremely different variations and, and maybe a better one, depending on your preference. So just showing you, you know, sticking with the classic for today, but start asking your liquor stores what kind of Italian spirits they have and, and play around with this at home. So we're gonna do an ounce of this as well. And then we're gonna reach for that Discovery Series Cast Strength Premium Bourbon and we're going to do an ounce of this. So this would be kind of more of the more traditional recipe, um, but it's very important here that you 
take into consideration what proof of the bourbon that you are using. So with most cocktails, as we did with the first one, um, you're going to be using a spirit that's either 90 or 100 proof. Bartenders really like 100 proof spirits and cocktails. And that was what we used with Fusion in the first one. Since Discovery is cash strength, I actually think cash strengths work perfectly if you want to keep it simple and just do an even one, one, one across the board. Hard to forget that, right? Um, reach for your cast strength. And then, you know, if you've got a, a really nice cast strength, it's just going to make it more of a treat for yourself to have that nice bourbon in there. So we're going to ice this down just the same as the first one. Sometimes at more, let's say, elevated cocktail programs, bars with you know, fancy cocktail lists and things like that, you'll see them shave their own ice and use just a giant ice block. So when you see bars using you know, a large ice cube uh, that they shave and put in the mixing glass, that just means they are you know, really slowing down the rate of dilution to give them more control over how, how far they dilute it. So once again, this is just gonna be a quick stir, stir, stir. We're gonna watch the wash line rise and the ice fall. The bar spoon is a really great starting tool if you want to start making cocktails at home. Comes in handy in, in many different ways. So as you can see, that didn't take long at all. Perfectly diluted. And with higher proof bourbon, it is going to dilute quicker as well. So we're going to strain that. Add our big fancy ice cube. and garnish this with an orange peel as well. If you think that this part looks trivial and silly, I encourage you to try the cocktail before you express the orange over it, and then after to see how incredibly different it's going to taste. It really just adds some zip, some life, just like in cooking, a little bit of acid, a little bit of essence from these citrusy fruits. Uh, really can just balance a meal, and in this case, balance a cocktail. So orange peel on top, and that is your top shelf Boulevardier with our Discovery series. So the final cocktail that I want to show you in this category of Boulevardiers is how to batch one. So making, instead of one at a time, uh, making a large amount to keep in the fridge. That way, you know, when you want to have two or three in a night, you don't have to keep all of your ingredients out, you can just reach in the fridge and grab your batch. So, I love batching cocktails, I'm a big fan. A uh, couple of tips. Whether you're using the first recipe or the second recipe, you're just going to multiply by however much you're trying to batch. So, in my case, I have four Boulevardiers batched in here. Uh, there's also some stuff floating around, as you can see. So, one cool thing about batching is that it gives you a great opportunity to infuse your cocktail. What I used to infuse my cocktail today was cocoa nibs and whole coffee beans. So I have these two ingredients out here to show you. Uh, the cocoa nibs, you probably have to find at a special kind of uh, natural grocery store or Amazon, which is where I got these. They're organic, great for many different things, baking, infusing in cocktails. And then your local coffee shop, right? Uh, I live in Louisville. This is Sunner Goss Coffee, huge fan of them. And so I have their whole beans, very important that you're not using the grounds, but whole beans. And I just, four cocktails took the same ingredients from the first one with Fusion, uh, you know, times four into this container, um, added my cocoa nibs, kind of just eyeballing it um, into the mason jar. So you want to leave a little headspace for those dry ingredients. I let that infuse overnight. In the morning, I put in just less than a handful of coffee beans. Coffee beans being lighter and the cocoa nibs being more dense um, will infuse faster. So I didn't want those to sit overnight. Uh, so I just put them in in the morning and now I'm going to strain it off, show you the final product. So you'll wanna grab something like a, a mesh comb because there's some fine pieces in there and you're just gonna strain it out into any other container that can hold it.
and you can smell it right away, just how aromatic this is with the cocoa and the coffee. You don't have to do cocoa and coffee. You can use other things that you might have around um, the cupboard or your fridge. I know uh, the cocktail Contessa from Bourbon Woman uses pineapple, which sounds amazing. And one thing additional I did to the batch cocktail was add a little bit of water so that the spirits together are just kind of binding a little bit easier with a little addition of water. And that way I don't have to dilute it at all to make my cocktail. I just simply need an ice cube. Once you strain it, keep it in the fridge. As it's infusing, you wanna keep it at room temperature. And then you're just going to take a big ice cube, pour that infusion. I'm gonna say about three ounces should do good since we have a little bit of water in here as well. And then I still think an orange peel works really well with the cocoa and the coffee even. So I'm gonna grab that. Garnish it right there after expressing the oils. And now you have something that you've prepped ahead of time that is elevated, sophisticated, delicious, and unlike anything that most people are used to being served when they come over for a drink. So there is your batched coffee and cocoa nib Boulevardier.